All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of Locked On Avalanche with the Avs having a couple days off. Why not get some questions from the Locked On Avalanche podcast following over on Instagram? So we put up a, a mailbag, got a bunch of questions, and we're going to answer those today. A lot on Bo Horvat, or the Avalanche going after him, a lot on just trades in general, injuries, and a lot of concern if the Avalanche are even going to make the playoffs. I only can assume you didn't listen to yesterday's episode because uh, we we should have put your mind at ease. But if you didn't, please go back and listen to that one after you listen to this new episode of Locked On Avalanche coming at you right now. Your Locked On Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of Locked on Avalanche. We are part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, Chris Maselli. With me, as always, Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. Thank you for making this your first listen of the day. Always appreciated. Follow us on our social media outlets, LOPN underscore Avalanche on Twitter, Locked on Avalanche on Instagram. Questions, comments, concerns, and opinions, Locked on Avalanche at gmail.com. And follow us on our YouTube channel over on YouTube. Hit subscribe, get notified when a new show goes live. And today's pretty much going to be uh, an, an Instagram day with a lot of questions that we've thrown out on the mailbag. Uh, if So like I said, if you don't follow on Instagram and you want to get involved when we do things like this, we haven't done it in a couple of weeks. I think yep. it's because we really haven't done it, I think, the entire month of December because there were so many games in December. Yep. It was just off day game off day game and now with like the extra day off let's hear from you people so uh we i mean we can jump right into it if you want why wait because there's a why bunch wait here. yolo a bunch here. Yeah. <laughs> um and like i said in the opening there, there's a lot with with bo horvat so i'll start there there's there, there was a couple people that and that asked this question um do you do you really think that the avalanche would go after him and uh, yes, the short answer is yes. The, the ads will be involved. I'll say that. Um, I think it'll be something similar to last year with uh, Claude Giroux. They wanted, they, they named no bones about it, that they wanted to bring him in. That was a little bit different scenario in terms of it was really up to Giroux. Yeah. And the Flyers were going to, you know, whatever his wishes were, they were going to abide by that where he wanted to go. He didn't want to go to Colorado, want to go to Florida. They made that deal. I don't think the same thing. That's not the same as far as like <laughs> wherever the Canucks want to deal him, what, what the best deal is for them, they're going to make that deal. So I don't know what the Avalanche will be able to package together. Um, but I do feel like they will be in on, on Horvat 100%. I don't know why you wouldn't. Um, Bo yeah. Horvat, he's sitting on 42 points. And for anybody who's still sitting on the fence, uh, get ready for this game tonight. Scout him for yourself. Make your own little score sheet. Mm. You are going to get your front row seat to the Bo, Bo Horvat Express. So, mm -hmm. and hey, just keep an eye on JT Miller as well. Just, just in passing, his name always comes up. And what you're hearing coming out of that Canucks locker room on how it's kind of everything's falling apart. Look at that. Yeah, it's yeah. they anticipated a much better season. And oh, sure. with that roster, right. <laughs> does boy, does that sound familiar? Right. But um it they anticipated a better season. So look at Bo Horvat. And honestly, 42 points right now sounds really, really good. So here's the thing with with Horvat though, is is it's a good number cap wise. It's only mm -hmm. five and a half million cap wise. That's a really, really good deal. But it's only for the remainder of this season. Yeah. So that's where the Avalanche might tread lightly, is because they don't like to do this. They don't like to get rentals. Um, they were gonna take the chance with Giroux to do that, um, but I don't. I think you know they're they're, they're not in the state of mind to do that year after year. So if they can't, if, if they if they don't feel confident that they can sign him. I don't know if they do the deal and, and, and it's kind of twofold. In addition to that, of not knowing if they're able to sign him, not knowing what his number is going to be, his number's going up. It's not going to be five and a half million dollars. 
So next year is going to be interesting with the Avs and a lot of restricted free agents and unrestricted free agents. They're really going to have to figure out, can they sign him long-term? If they don't, I, I feel like they just pull out of the deal unless what they're giving up is not a lot, which I don't see that happening because I think Vancouver is going to want at least a first-round pick, and the Avalanche do not want to give up a first-round pick. You also have to think, in contrast to the Claude Giroux trade from last year that was lingering, EJ money falls off this year. A lot of money falls off this year. I mean, a lot. You, you have a lot of unrestricted free agents. You, I mean, let me see. I mean, I'm just doing quick math here. You have JT. Uh, you have Bo. Will be which is he, small. He, he's going to be restricted. Um, yeah. You have JT, New Hook. Evan Rodriguez, Andrew Cogliano, Darren Helm, Logan O'Connor, uh, and then your restricteds are Ben Myers, Alex Newhook, Martin Kaut, uh, Dennis Mulgan. Yeah, Eric Johnson. England is actually unrestricted. He's only 750. You have, I mean, with all of this money coming off, I, uh, I think a quick math is like $18 million that you have coming off of the books. And you also has, have to look at that money in contrast to the Eagles that have come up and participated and contributed to the Avalanche already this year. Mm. And you're going to have to ans- like ask the question, who are we okay with letting go for if Bo Horvat comes to the Avalanche, continues this pace, is it worth it? And is it something we could build around? Right. It will be interesting. They, they will be in on it, but they're going to have to get creative. And that's not exclusive to the Avalanche. So many teams are going to have to get creative because so many teams are in the same situation the Avalanche are in where just cap money is kind of at a premium. So what do you do? Um, And there's another question. Just uh, let's see. uh, God, I love your names on Instagram, people. Sometimes I cannot even pronounce what your usernames are. Uh, Mudo Noni, I think. (laughs) <laughs> asks, is there, do you feel a trade, any trade, not just Horvat, any trade in the near future? Technically, I think the near future would be like the trade deadline. Obviously, yeah. that's that's March. I, do, I If there's any trade in the near future, it's a depth trade. I don't yeah. think that you're going to have something of the Bo Horvat ilk uh, now because teams usually wait because teams teams that are, are shipping the player out know the longer we wait, the better deal we get because teams will start fighting with each other and maybe overpay. So, and that just doesn't happen right now. So, um, and I don't, I don't really see a, a depth move coming right now either. So, no, I think this is all. This is going to be moves closest to the deadline, a week two at the most before the deadline. I don't think the Avalanche make a move till day of with the flux of injured and non-injured and eagles up and down Mm -hmm. i feel like you still don't understand you don't know what this avalanche team is i don't feel like there's going to be a move made until trade deadline day yeah that's when you'll get the most but will you get one of those like just random hey there's a one for one we're already we're already comfortable with our eagles yeah like the like the nico sturm for tyson jost deal like that doesn't really move the needle all that much. Like, will you get that? There's always a possibility of that, but I, we already again, tried Chikrin is... two or three times. Funny you mention Jacob Chikrin because we did have a uh, question on him. Let me bring it up so I can give that person the credit. Um, uh, M H Riz sixty eight just asked Jacob Chikrin trade. I'm honestly shocked that the Avalanche are not more involved. You're, you're shaking your head no. Dude, I would jump on this in a heartbeat for multiple reasons. His cap number is fantastic, and you get him for two more years after this season's over. That's term. In, in today's day and age of, of hockey, that is term. And you got him for two more years at like four. I think he's – I don't have cap friendly up in front of me. He's 4.5 or 4.6. That's a steal. That is one of the best contracts in hockey minus Devon Taves' contract. So I would do it in a second. And I'm really surprised you're not hearing more about the avalanche being in on it. 
So that I, I and I don't hear it. I don't hear that they are. And it's kind of surprising, maybe because they just feel like they're really good on defense in terms of, I mean, they are good on defense in terms of their roster and, and just who they have and players that they have that they don't feel like they need to go after another top end defenseman. But um, I, I just feel like when you have somebody like him available at that cap number, you jump on that. No, I'm <clears throat> he's not my number one t- like target name. Mm hmm. If it's one of those that, let's say, the Avalanche lose out on the Bo Horvat thing, and he goes to Florida, because that's kind of ha- what happened last year. Mm-hmm. Like I see Chicken being the good second or third option, but you get this whole—you haven't seen a healthy defense yet for the Avalanche. So, I'd like to see what they look like healthy. Uh, and again, this is going to be a trade deadline move, but right. The problem right now is you need the Avalanche to score, and I feel like that's what you need number one mm-hmm. yeah no i agree it's not like the one and only deal that you're gonna make no it's it to me like do they need him not necessarily like if yeah. they're if they're a healthy defense from top to bottom um do they need him no this would just be one of those where it's like it's a gluttony of riches and why why not it just all matches up number wise to do it um, and maybe you're sacrificing something else. Maybe like you do need scoring. So maybe you are, you don't get to make another trade to bring in some scoring if you're bringing in another defenseman. And I, I was, I was shouting from the rooftops to kind of go after Chikrin last year when they were healthy. I just think he's, he's that good. And it's just that everything just adds up. So do I think it's going to happen? No. And it, it surprises me a little bit that the Avalanche don't want to get in on that for some reason. And it's one of those we have a we have a little bit of time between now and the trade deadline. If everybody comes back and this team starts clicking again and starts mm-hmm. scoring five, six, seven goals a game, then that problem solved. And then you start looking at the defense and you're like, you know, maybe. And then that it gets a little bit more lucrative closer to the trade deadline. I mean, if we're gonna make a deal with Arizona, you, you know who I want. You want the ghost bear. Uh, yes. yes. I mean, that's that just goes without saying. Um and we'll do one more on, on trades before we uh, take a quick break. But there was, uh, let's see, Muzcat73 says, uh, again, sticking with the trade theme, who do you feel is most likely to be traded by the abs at the trade deadline? And we don't have to get into for who, obviously, but um, if the abs, you know, they're going to make a deal, who's on their way out? Could be on their way out. I know I defended him all year, but with that contract – and the body of work, Sammy G's got to be number one. Because mm-hmm. yeah. we just talked about the re- unrestricted and restricted free agents for the Avalanche. Other than that, you're not getting rid of Lekkanen. You're not getting oh rid of... God, no. You're not, like... No, top six... Him. Yeah, top six is safe. Um, what else are you going to do? E- EJ is going away. Why would you pick up EJ? Like but Nobody would trade for him. Nobody's yeah. taking that contract. Like, who's your next option? It's got to be... It's not... I'm not saying so, get him out of here right now. It's he's the most lucrative trade piece sitting yeah, on the avalanche. Um, it, it's tough because the guys you have locked up long term uh, are not guys you're going to get rid of. You're not getting rid of Miko Rantanen. You're not getting rid of Nathan McKinnon. You're not getting rid of Nachuskin, Lekkinen. Um, obviously, Kale. You have Sam Girard locked up for four more years after this one. Um, I, I, the Avalanche likes Sam Girard, and it's not. I don't feel like he's number one on the list to be traded. But that's not to say, like, if a deal were to come along, would he be available? Sure, yeah. I think. Yeah, I think he would be. If you follow on Instagram and you saw my answer to this person's question, it's half just drumming up uh, discussion, and there's half some like legit reasons to this. I said. I said JT Comfort. Hmm. And the reason I said that is because he's in a contract year. Mm -hmm. And, oh, shocking, he's having the best year of his life in a contract year. Do the Avalanche, number one, really want to – I mean, I think they do want to bring him back. But now, like, you have kind of like Nazem Kadri version 2.0, not the production Nazem Kadri was giving you. Please don't misconstrue that. It's just that in a contract year, he's having the best year of his life. It's not 
80 something points that Kadri had, but it is enough to ask the question, is somebody out there looking at this and in the off season going to throw more money at JT Comfort than the avalanche are willing to throw to him knowing what he's given them, which is not a lot prior to this year. So do you know that that could happen and make a deal because he's an unrestricted, he can go anywhere he wants in the off season anyway. And yes, while he's having a good year, do you ride it out and see what the rest of the season goes like? And hopefully it ends in a Stanley cup title. And then he goes his merry way. Like, uh, Nazem Kadri did, even though you want to try to sign him. I don't, it, it's a very, it's one of those situations that the avalanche are in right now with JT Comfort. I will end this and let, I'll get, I want to get your take on this. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think they are going to trade JT Comfort. I think he's here for the year. I think they will sign him at a reasonable number for next year. Um, and I don't think he's going anywhere. But is it something that they probably are talking about internally? I don't – you have to. He's an unrestricted free agent. I think you have to have that conversation. Let's go ahead and take our break now. I want to follow this up oh. at the other end. Oh. This is this is a super tease because everybody think of your favorite member of the Colorado Avalanche. We're about to have a tiny little discussion. On that note, betonline.net. It's your number one source for your sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from pro football to the college bowl season, which is wrapping up, to basketball, and obviously our beloved NHL. We've got it all at betonline.net, probably even if you think JT Confer is going to get traded, which I'm sure the odds on that are very high. Uh, and if you love sports podcasts, you can even find those over at Bet Online as well. We're always the fastest and easiest to get your betting info. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. That is betonline.net. It's where the game starts. All right, sir. So, uh, yeah, you wanted to comment on my, I'm sure, ridiculous offering of JT Confer potentially being trade bait. I'm going. I, I'm going to take your ridiculous because it makes sense when you right. phrase it that way. Mm -hmm. I want to up it one more. Okay. Would you rather have JT Comfort, who you know what you're going to get, and what you're getting right now is probably the best you're going to see, and it's going to get down to his average, or would you be interested in a new hook or a Bo Byram, and you gamble on their future? We we have we have also experimented with new hook who was your fourth line center the other night mm -hmm. and bo byram who you can't get more than 30 games out of would you like to take this piece and possibly when it comes to like bo horvat hey you're going to be blowing up this team like even jt miller doesn't want to be there anymore <laughs> would you like jt comfer or would you like a potential of a new hook or a bo byram you can build your team around he would offer up Alex Newhook and Bo Byron right now. If we're going, I, so if, if we're getting <laughs> Bo Horvat back, oh, you're okay. So you're talking specifically for a Horvat trade? Yes. Um, I mean, I, I, I would, I wouldn't do both of them. I cannot give up both of my my first round picks. Um, and I probably wouldn't do Byram because he's the defenseman. If you want Alex Newhook in a deal to bring in Bo Byram, um, or excuse me, Bo, Bo Horvat, um, I, I probably am making that deal. Um, but again, it would I, I'd have to know I have a really good chance of signing him. I just don't want to give up. You know, I wouldn't even want to give up Alex Newhook just for half a year of Bo Horvat, and I know that sounds maybe a little bit ridiculous, but that's it's kind of I'm, I'm kind of trying to think like the Avalanche do, and that's just not what they they entertain. It's just it's but, something it's something to think about because you brought up the JT Comfer. <laughs> you know what you're getting. Is that a piece you want to plug into your team, or do you want to so, take a gamble on the right. future? No, I get it. And and so let me ask this question though about JT Comfer. If he was having a typical JT Comfer like season, would he be the answer? Would he be the number one answer to that question? No, who who would be the who would be on the Avs list of who who would be 
who would the Avalanche be trading at you know this during this trade season if he was having his typical JT con- not this the you know this good season that he's having let's not kid ourselves he's not having a Gretzky like season he's having an improved season would he be on that list of players that you would be trading I don't know if, what his trade value is no I, I don't care about the trade value I, yeah, I get that if, but, even if but, it was a typical year it would the Sam Gerard thing. You could solve so right. many problems okay. with that trade. Fine. So, but he would be on your list. No, awesome. JT Confer, I think absolutely he would be, and I think people would be saying like, "Yes, JT Confer, he's had more than enough chances. Um, let's let's you know, let's get something for him, especially that he's an unrestricted free agent. We're not going to sign him in the off season. He hasn't shown us anything. Let's move on from him. You are trading him at this trade deadline." Now that he's had half a year where he's shown you that he's he's capable of playing better than he's ever played in his career, we all want to keep him. And we all want to say, like, oh, he's going to be an avalanche for life. Maybe he will be. And, and I root for him just like root for any other avalanche. And I, and I love watching him play. You know, like, I back him so much in the playoffs. I think he rises to the occasion in the playoffs. I'm just saying it is a possibility that they have to look at the totality of what he has done in an avalanche sweater and it's been middle of the road. It's just at the best. best. Yeah. At best. So is half a year, is 36 games. That's uh, a quarter of a year. It was a slow it, start, too. It, yeah. Is that really enough for them to throw all the eggs in the JT Confer basket and throw them an eight-year Val Nechuskin deal? No, that's not going to happen. Just saying something to watch. Again, I, I don't think it's going to happen, but who knows. Kind of sticking with what you were just talking about. Um, Cam Rizzo asks, do you think that Gerard's contract size, uh, with Bo Byram and Alex Newhook's contracts for next year, restricted that they are forces a trade of Sam Gerard? Um, my response to that was it's actually benefiting. And I hate saying this because they're avalanche players are rooting for him. Um, it's actually benefiting the avalanche that Alex Newhook is not, has not like taken that two C role and run with it. Um, And obviously the injuries to Bo Byram don't help him either in terms of what their next contract is going to look like. So the avalanche kind of have, have gotten lucky, so to speak with that, because these contracts that are coming up for those two guys are not going to break the bank on the abs. So it'll be interesting to see what Byram and, and new hook want to do. If you ask me, I, like they might have, they might want to take a chance on themselves and sign a, a bridge. If you're the avalanche and you have faith in them that they can become the players that you really want them to be, you sign them long-term. You sign them for, you know, maybe a Kale McCarr six-year deal at a low number because if they keep if they go to where you want to, you have them locked up for a while at a low number. This will be something interesting to watch. Two things: we have a lot of Instagram followers with a lot of Riz in the names. We Whoa. do. That's a lot of Rizzes. Um, Frank Rizzo from the Jerky Boys yeah. show up. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, a lot of Riz in our yeah. following. Um, I the thing with New Hook is: are you going to get more value now out of if he's a potential trade piece now? Just mm-hmm. saying, the, with the future pitch, let's just say this is going to be what you're going to get out of New Hook for the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. Do you want this? I don't think they're going to. If you're talking about a trade, I'm talking if, like, does he have more value now or at the end of the year? If everything is status quo at the end of the yep. year, is this something you want to potentially sign and do this yeah. project oh, yeah. all over again? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's 21 years old. You know what I mean? He's 21 years old. And, and Byram is Byram 21? Is, I think Byram just turned 21 too. Yeah, I think Byram is an incomplete. I feel like you, you can't make a proper assessment on Bo Byram well, because you don't you've know. You've seen Byram. Like you've seen what when he's healthy, dude's a game changer, right? It's just remaining healthy that's the problem. Yeah. So, um, no, I don't think they're, they are not anywhere near throwing in the towel on Alex Newell because he's 21 years old. 
and that is value. I'm like people would trade for him in a minute, in a minute, in a New York minute, because mm -hmm. he's that you know he's a first round draft pick who's still 21 years old. People will take a chance on that every day, twice on Sunday. So no, I don't think he's going anywhere. I think he he is getting signed. Bo Bo Byron is getting signed. Yeah. Um, it's just bridge or long term. And I think for the Avalanche, I think they they, yeah. While while Newhook hasn't gotten the production out of him that they want, um, I think they're still fine. I I could see them giving him give him term. You give him term. You're not giving him a good dollar amount, but you're going to give him term. I have this terrible feeling that the Avs are going to do this, and at the end of the year, Sackick and McFarland are going to pitch him a number. And in somewhere like Buffalo or Ottawa, they're going to overshoot, steal them away, yeah. and nothing. You that was an empty. You, for, you come away from this project empty-handed. When when it, what you're talking about for like New Hook? Yes. Well, he would have to want that. I mean, he's restricted, so like he would he would have to pull like a a Kachuk and just be like not signing with you. Yeah, that's that's. I I just I have concerns about. Mm -hmm. Holding out so long. I will say, I, I, I'm really going to be watching that in the offseason to see what they do with those. Two. Not, I, I feel like they're going to bring them back. When, when I say, like, I'm really interested to see what they do, what's the number going to be? What's yeah. the number going to be? What's the term going to be? Because if it, if they had, you know, Byron has never gotten injured and just has been able to, to play, uh, we've seen what he can do. Man, that, that, that would be a, a bigger number. Yeah, and the same with New Hook. So now that I, the the Avs are kind of in in command and in charge with at least the dollar amount, I feel I don't feel like New Hook and Byron can go to them and say like we're we're commanding X amount of dollars because the Avs are going to be like yeah, I haven't you haven't stayed healthy and you haven't produced, so yeah. we're not there yet. Um, Let's see. So we, we do have questions on playoffs. Um, playoffs? Playoffs. Um, Juju B4393 asks, what do you think the likelihood, a percentage or a 1 to 10 ranking, that the abs don't make the playoffs? To which I answered, as of today, I think they have a 1% chance to not make the playoffs. I'll never say 100% on anything, but... I, like I said, yesterday's episode, we kind of looked at where they are in the standings. They're okay. Do they need to play better? Yeah, <laughs> that, that's pretty simple. But they are not so far behind as far as a wild card goes. And even in the Central that we're, we're sitting here on, on January 4th when we're recording this, like, oh, no, the Avs, you know, why don't we go into suck for Bedard category here? Like, no, that's not going to happen. The Ducks are beating the Stars as we're recording. So even the top. Quack, quack, quack. <laughs> ducks <Yeah>. fly together. <laughs> um, but like we talked about, this is an easy ladder to climb. As long as the Avalanche put things together, start against Vancouver tonight, get back to your winning ways, get back healthy, this team will be fine. Do not worry about missing the playoffs. We haven't even hit the trade deadline yet. Mm -hmm. We could easily start streaking. Just <laughs> Just we're going to the quad. We're going. <laughs> but you're my boy blue. But like, <laughs> just don't lose hope. Like we've had worse seasons. We could do this. Hey, we've been down yeah. to a game 82 scenario. It, it might have to mm -hmm. be the case this year. Maybe. Like, Maybe. Don't lose yeah. hope already. If we're, yeah. what are you going to do? If we don't make the playoffs, we're going to all be right back at it the next year. Like, right. hold on, yeah. ride it out. And that kind of answers the question that Brandon France asked, which is, you know, have you uh, dropped the panic button? And I, I, I've never, even, I haven't even hovered over it yet, man. Like I, I, I'm not there. We're, we're, we have, we have a long, we're not even halfway in the season yet. So we have, uh, we have a good ways to go. Uh, JBP five two one says, are the reverse retro jerseys for this year cursed? We'll never know because we're not wearing them anymore, which yeah. kind of upsets me. Yeah, I, I, I don't know why, like, you know, you have this big, like, media push for these things and you wear them four times in the regular season. I 
don't understand. Like these should just, if you're going like reverse retro and this is a big deal, just have them replace your third, third jerseys for the year. And we still don't know who the Jersey supplier is going to be for next year. This is not, this is the last, this is the swan song, if you will, for Adidas. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Here's a good one. Maddie, Maddie talk. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. So who do you think keeps a roster spot if and when the abs are fully healthy? And this is a good question um, because I was looking at, I answered him like immediately without even looking at the roster. And I said, you know, I feel like Ben Myers. That's what really I was. Go- yeah. Played himself into a, a, a spot, but look at, just look at the roster right now. All right. Brad Hunt. So this is this is who's you know the, these are rock solid people who have roster spots right when when healthy. Andrew Cogliano, I'm just going alphabetically. Yeah. Andrew Cogliano, JT Comfer, Darren Helm, Lekkinen, McKinnon, Newhook. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Newhook, Nachuskin, O'Connor, Rantanen, Rodriguez. That's ten. So you add Gabe Landeskog to that. And that's eleven. There's one spot available. Ben Myers. Okay, I would say Ben Myers or or Dennis Mulgan right now. Mm. And I think they would probably give it to Dennis Mulgan because, you know, you can send Ben Myers down and you don't have to put him on waivers or anything like that because he's on an ELC. You let him continue to grow a little bit down there. And I mean, what you can't. I guess you could send Malgan down, but I, I kind of feel like they, they are really impressed with how Malgan's been playing. They're also really impressed with Ben Myers. I was about to say I'm impressed very, her with Ben Myers. It's gonna be a very, very tough decision. Yeah. So uh and and I guess there's really no wrong answer because it, it, it's gonna come down to those two guys. Um me, I would like to see Ben Myers. That's the guy who chose the avalanche. Yeah, coming down to Minnesota, could have stayed in that state, which a lot of guys do. Um, and he chose us. So I just like that and nothing against Mulgan. I mean, he was, you know, he's traded. So that, that's, um, and, cool. I, and I've loved Mulgan. I love his play. I mean, good Lord. Yeah. The, if this season continues the way it is, both will have a spot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Just questions on, on Bo Byram and his, his injury. We have no idea. It's just lower body. We don't know what it is. Um, but we know that he, they do think that he will be back at some point this year. Um, Birdie Arse, Birdie Arse mm-hmm. ask, where would you rank the abs D in the entire league when healthy? Whoa. Ooh, ooh. Cut and dry. Like they, they, they are the best defensive unit from top to bottom. I'd say a top five defense. Top. If all healthy, I think, I think number one, and I don't know who would really challenge them. You know, that, that, that is a solid, solid defensive unit yep. <clears throat> from top to bottom. And I know even with the people who are thinking Sam George's not playing well, like he's a great puck mover. He's a good skater. Sure, he's undersized. but um, And he buys you extra time on offensive zone transition. Sure. Yep. Um, where was it? One, one person wanted to know if they can order their Bo Horvat 53 Avalanche jersey. I said, go for it, because if he doesn't come here, you got a limited edition jersey on your hands. Who am I to say no? Yeah. Uh, what's one Avs player you wish that we got back? So I'm thinking like, uh, well, yeah, for you. Yeah. That, I mean, go outside of that. Is there anybody like, and you can go way back too. It doesn't have to be like current, obviously. Ooh. Um, yeah. If we could bring, and they have to be playing currently. No, no, no. Like this could be Ooh. the entire existence of the Colorado Avalanche. Someone I miss that... there are days that I miss waking up and tracking Jerome Ginla. You know what? I was thinking about him too. Yeah. yeah. And and I just man, he was one guy that you just were rooting for to at least play like, you know, play and have the chance to win the cup. Yep. Um, God, you you you're really hoping that. Yeah. For me, <laughs> excuse me. Um uh, I hated the day and i understand it but they when they traded adam deadmarsh always a big adam deadmarsh fan um yeah he traded him to the kings for blake and you know that that was a good trade 
but he was just one of my favorites. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, I, and and when when guys like that get traded, um, I always like like it, it it stings, and I'm like, well, maybe like at the end of his career, he just comes back, and it never happened, and he, he just had concussion issues, and he had to retire. And I miss in his prime, Blake Como. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, and then uh, a couple more favorite beverage. Who asks? K Steel Twelves favorite beverage for watching a game. <laughs> um, it's tough now, man. Like, cause cause we do this show. Like, I don't want to be intoxicated while we're because we record right after uh, you know games are over. So we got to be in tip top shape. Um, so I don't really drink alcohol during the game. So I'm more of a a flavored seltzer guy that I, that I, if it's a Friday game, cause we don't do shows on the weekend. Usually. Um, if you are asking me like alcohol wise, I'm, I'm a Manhattan drinker. I'm a bourbon guy. See, I haven't had an alcoholic beverage in like three years. Mm-hmm. And anybody who knows me knows I it's energy you're, drink. Yeah. You're energy. I can't drink those things, man. I, it's, I'm not drink them. I drink an energy drink in the morning. And then one at night, and I do Powerade all day long. So yeah, like it's got to be an energy drink, like one of those G Fuel, like Rain, like just like the ones that are for, like, working out. Yep, those are mine. All right, and finally we'll end with this one. B B Chicas Chicas ask, uh, did we know each other before the podcast? And for those that don't know. No, we did not. Um, I, I hosted this show for a solid two years solo. Um, but when, when Locked On got into the NHL, they started with the NBA uh, because our, our owner is the play-by-play guy for the Utah Jazz, David Locke. Um, he started it with all NBA teams and they went to NFL. And then uh, the following year, they did baseball and hockey. and um, I was doing some writing for another hockey podcast and I reached out to locked on. They did not have an avalanche host at the time it was just starting and they got back to me and I took the gig and I did it for two years by myself. And I got to the point where I'm like, I feel like people are getting bored listening to just me <laughs> and Kyle, Kyle reached out early on. You, you sent me an email early on and you were like, Hey, would love to come on. And I remember specifically, you were like, I'm not weird. Yeah. <laughs> There was something in the email where you're like, I would love to come on. And I know you probably get this a lot. Uh, I'm not like this weirdo, but, and I was like, yeah, well, I, you know, I'll put anybody on the show. At that point. Yeah. I think it was the fandom Friday. And I remember prefacing it, it like um, I'm from Alabama, but I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So you came on a bunch of times. Yeah. I had a lot of people on a lot of fans on and stuff like that. And I think you can't, you easily came on more than anybody else. And every time you came on, we just, hit it off it was just really easy to do a show like it is right now and it got to the point like i said where i'm like i feel like we got to go to the next stage here and bring somebody on and it was it was going to be kyle or nobody like i was (laughs) i was going to go back to just doing it solo until i found somebody if he didn't want to do it or couldn't do it and uh luckily he said yes and yeah show's been a million times better since then so that's our story and we're sticking to it yeah (laughs) I used to come on after like tornado warnings and root canals. Oh my God. Remember that you were, yeah, you were in Alabama and you were, I remember you, you took video, you were in like a, a bomb shelter or something. Yeah. Like it was that. a tornado yeah. shelter. And I was asking everybody like shoulder to shoulder, everybody freaking out. I remember asking them, uh, what do you guys think about the avalanche chance tonight? Yeah. That was so funny. <laughs> They're like avalanche. It's a tornado. It's like, <laughs> Oh man. So yeah, uh, it's been fun. It's been uh, a lot of fun and you people seem to enjoy it. So, uh, we'll keep doing it. Love it. So <laughs> that's going to wrap it up for today. Hopefully, uh, that was, that was enjoyable for you because it was for us to hear from our listeners and take some questions. So, um, we'll probably do it again. Cause there are, are, um, days in the month where they do have, you know, multiple days off. So, Maybe towards the end of the month, we'll do another, we'll, we'll do one at the beginning of the month and then one at the end of the month. See where we're at at the end of the month. And if we've calmed down a little bit coming off of these ledges that we're all 
up next to with the avalanche right now. So, all right, everyone, thank you for tuning in and making it your first listen of the day. That's always appreciated. Um, and we will be back. Uh, I don't know if we'll be back tomorrow. We'll, we'll have to wait and see, but, um, sooner or later we'll be back. (laughs) We might just have a, a one day off. Uh, okay. Until next time, he is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan, and I am Chris Maselli. This is the Lockdown Avalanche podcast. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. We'll see you guys later.